Welcome back, good to see you. Today we are continuing our series on ticks, specifically the diseases that they carry. Yes, we're gonna focus on Lyme disease, but that is not the only nasty thing that ticks carry. Let's go. This is Destructive Creativity. We exist for you, for science, and for fun. So if you like any of those things, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the like button if you want to. Okay, this week we are covering the diseases that ticks carry, but next week we are going to be going over how to safely remove ticks. There's a lot of misconceptions, so make sure you catch that one. I'm going to be using a few different scientific studies. I'll try and link them down below. Uh, otherwise, I've been getting a lot of my information from the John Hopkins Lyme Disease Research Center. I think they know what they're talking about. Ticks are classified as one of the most dangerous creatures on the planet, not because they will knock you down and eat your body, although they would love to do that as well, it's because they give you little parting gifts. As soon as they start sucking your blood, they will gift you with all of the bacteria that they are carrying. The most common of which is the strains of Borrelia, which you would probably know more as Lyme disease. And yeah, we're going to cover Lyme disease, why it's so hard to diagnose, what the symptoms are, etc, etc, but it's important to note that there are over 120 dangerous microbes that ticks carry that are harmful to humans. Let's start with the common myths about Lyme disease. So if you think about Lyme disease, just casually you think, okay, so a tick bites you and then you start getting this big old bullseye rash wherever it is, and then you look at the bullseye rash, you have Lyme disease, you get really tired, and you have flu-like symptoms, and it never goes away. Myth number one, as soon as a tick bites you, it gives you Lyme disease. No, typically for Borrelia to be transmitted from a tick to a human host, the tick has to be attached for at least 36 hours. So as long as you catch the tick on you, you probably won't be having any Lyme disease or the symptoms thereof. Myth number two! You can tell if you have Lyme disease if you have that bull's eye marking. According to John Hopkins Lyme Disease Research Center, only a minority of cases actually have that signature bull's eye pattern. Typically, the majority of cases just have a red swollen lump that's chalked up to a spider bite or a generic Hmm, I must have been bitten by a bug sometime. Bite. Myth number three, Lyme disease only exists out east because that's where the ticks live. Well, no. Lyme disease is transmitted by the black leg tick, also, also called the deer tick, and there's two different types of black leg tick. One on the east coast and one on the west coast. So if you're in long grass in the prairies or hill regions of North America, yeah, they're black leg ticks. Myth number whatever comes next. If you think you have Lyme disease, just go in, get some blood tests, and then you'll know if you do. Well, no, because unfortunately it takes a long time for your body to realize that you actually have Lyme disease, and the blood tests only detect your immune response to Lyme disease. So, unfortunately, it can take up to three weeks before your body even knows you have it, and so there's no way for the medical profession to know either. In fact, Essentially, the only way a doctor can know if you have Lyme disease is the inspection of that initial rash. You know, the one that isn't always a bullseye. So what are the symptoms of this dreaded Lyme disease? There's headache, fatigue, stiff joints, and of course, that rash. Those are all just simply flu-like symptoms. But Borrelia can have devastating long-term effects, so it is important to get a proper diagnosis. Here in Canada, we do have a system where you can mail in your ticks if you find a tick on your body or on your pet, and have them tested. This will not in any way help with your own personal diagnosis or treatment of symptoms. So yeah, Lyme disease is nasty and it's really hard to diagnose. But that's not the end of the bad news, unfortunately. There are over 120 different microbes that are harmful to humans that tick have been known to carry and they carry them a lot. A few of the notable ones, Rocky Mountain Fever, Anaplasmosis, Babsiosis. In fact, a scientific article published in Nature Research in October of 2018 brought in over 400 human subjects that had been diagnosed with Lyme disease and then tested them for other harmful tick-borne diseases. Over 85% of them tested positive for other diseases that were completely missed in the initial diagnosis because all of the symptoms were simply chalked up to Lyme disease. 
So, if the symptoms are just like a common flu at the beginning, and it's and blood tests test negative for the first couple of weeks, and the rashes are highly irregular, and most doctors can't tell the difference, well, what then? What's the best thing you can do? Well, artificial intelligence to the rescue. Thankfully, computers can tell the difference between a normal bug bite or a rash and a rash caused by Lyme disease and ticks. Yes, it is easier to diagnose Lyme disease, but it still is a terrible disease and you really don't want to get it and it's very hard to tell. So what do we do? Well, you don't get bitten by a tick. Ticks are nasty. Put on your bug repellent. Don't go walking in long grass if you can help it. If you do go hiking in the mountains or walking through a field, look at yourself, check yourself, run a lint roller over your clothing, look in all of your joints where the skin is a little bit thinner, and just check yourself for ticks. If you catch them before they bite you, they won't be transmitting any diseases. And even if you do find them and they're attached, remove them right away. Don't let them suck your blood for more than 36 hours. Be thorough. Don't get bit. Stay safe. See you!